Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, so avoid legal snags by telling people they're being recorded. You're being recorded, Harris. Ooh. So I haven't yeah, been told. Be legal. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been told. <laughs> <laughs> Soon. <laughs> yeah all right here we go welcome everybody to another episode of secular jihadist for a muslim enlightenment uh my name is ali rizvi it's just uh me right now uh armin is away today uh but um uh we have uh today we have harris sultan back on the podcast uh, to talk about some really important, relevant topics that are that are in the, in the headlines nowadays. Uh, Harris Sultan is the author of The Curse of God, uh, which is a... Um, I think it's doing pretty well, right? We've been hearing a lot about it. Yeah, yeah, it's doing... It's, yes, it's doing okay. We've, we've sold around about, I think, something like 12,000, 13,000 copies. Yeah. Um, but we've given away close to, I don't know, 15,000 copies on Facebook and on the illegal downloads yeah, yeah, yeah. on PDF Live. With you. So I'm all good with that. I'm just send them out. Um, we're pretty close yeah. to getting it uh, translated in Urdu. Hopefully it was meant to be finished this month, but maybe mid-January the, the Urdu translation would be finished. Some, mm. Someone is translating that in Italian for some reason. So, yeah, it's great. That's great. It's great. That's fantastic. And, uh, and, and Harris, you are also, uh, you also host, I think, probably the only openly atheist uh, Pakistani um, YouTube channel, which is in Urdu, is in the local language, Urdu. So, uh, and, and you've had some pretty high profile guests um, like Hamza Ali Abbasi. You had a whole debate with him. Uh, Hamza Ali Abbasi is a famous um, uh, Pakistani actor. Uh, and uh, you've had some really interesting characters on as well. Like, oh, well, I mean, I, I love uh, Mufti Abu Layth. I think he was awesome. Yeah. Nah, he's uh, awesome. like a sort of a progressive um, religious guy, right? Yeah. Muslim. Uh, and do you, and and recently you had what's this guy's name? His the, name is Mufti. The new one, Mubashir Shah Qadri, which is which, we, it, so I, I basically call him Mullah Manafik in honor of uh, uh, Janet Hafiz, which uh, we would yeah. later be talking on. So yeah, my my channel Pakistani Mulhid is in Urdu. First, openly atheist in Urdu language, which is which is why it's drawing a lot of heat. But it's also getting like every day I get about 10, 15 messages every day in the morning on my Facebook um, uh, that hey, please send us the book. We want to hear more about you, where, where you're coming from. I've watched so many of your videos, and 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 I'm I'm remembering how when I first became aware of Richard Dawkins, and I had all these this this appetite for all these arguments. So what are yeah. these arguments? Who, is there anyone who can answer these questions? So now I think I'm seeing all these kids, 17, 18, 19 year old kids, or even younger, yeah, who have these appetite. And they're, they're, they're working out that something's wrong. There's, there's this conflict with this modern world and the ancient religious te teachings, but they don't have anyone to answer. So once they watch one video, then they end up watching all my videos. Like I've got something like, I don't know, maybe 40, 45 videos on my Urdu channel and then pretty much the same number of videos in, on my English channel. But yeah. Urdu channel is taking off. Um, um, the, the funny part is, normally you'd know that too, you usually get half as many views as the number of subscribers you have because you know not every subscriber watches your video. On my other hand, I've got now 14,500. Last time I was on your show, I had about 8,000, so three months mm -hmm. so it's doubled. That's pretty um, wild, yeah. But, but the videos, uh, the, 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 the people who view my videos end up almost being the same as the number of subscribers, if not more. So what that shows to me is that, and, and also you've got to remember, all my videos after a month get banned in Pakistan because mm -hmm. it's an Urdu language, so everyone's watching. And the, the Pakistani you know, censorship is onto it all the time. And, but, and they haven't banned the channel, though? Over. They can't ban the channel. I think they're, they're, it, that must be the problem. They can't ban the channel. Every video I put up, a month later, it comes up. Oh, it's been blocked by, it's been blocked in Pakistan. So I, I worked out. Okay, so it takes about a month for them to file a complaint, and you know, for it to go to YouTube, yeah. YouTube assesses it, whatnot. It probably takes a month. So I'm thinking, you know, after a while, <laughs> I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna recycle all my videos and I'm gonna upload them again. But um, I'm also encouraging. People Is there any other platform you can upload it to? Can you can you like look, Vimeo I mean, or do, or do they do the same thing? Look, I don't I don't know about other platforms, but I don't think other platforms are as popular as uh, as yeah, YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's really look, hard to. You, you could probably look. I mean, I could probably do it. I've I've got all the videos in my hard drive, so I can. It's it's, it's only a matter of a couple of days that I can just put them all up. 
Um, but but it's good. The the fact is, what I was trying what I was trying to get to is that the, these videos are addictive to these people. That shows an appetite. You know how yeah. how, how how Neil deGrasse Tyson or uh, Bill Nye speak about how there is an appetite to for people to consume these these uh, popular scientific videos. And you've got tons of YouTube channels who actually you know propagate the, the, the some of the YouTube videos produce better documentaries, 10-minute documentaries on, you know, supernova or, or, or a neutron star or something right. with good graphics. And, but, and they get millions of views. And so, so there's an appetite. We, we just, we, we, we're, cha- we, we're seeing the world being changed right now. These, these issues, nowhere near these re- issues can, can remotely the, be there's, discussed in mainstream channels. Yeah, yeah. No, there's also, I think, in addition uh, to an appetite, I think um, it's actually, st- it's still, even now, it's, shocking for someone to see someone like you it's like oh, this guy looks like me speaking the same language i do and he's saying these things that you're just not supposed to because because over there or at least I, I remember when i was growing up and even a lot of kids now growing up they had you know they have these they've got these sort of liberal progressive muslims like all the actors and actresses who who kind of are westernized in a way or you know they're a little bit more yeah uh, but they don't yeah, talk about more liberal. Things. Yeah, but they still, at the end of the day, they're like, honey, Allah, Allah, this, you know, and thank Allah yeah. for this, and thank Allah for that. And then you have these really conservative, like, mullah-type people, and those are the two options. So they go for one or the other option. Now, now you show up, and you're a third option. You're like, okay, this guy's just, he's beyond that. He's just giving it all up, and he's actually talking about it in detail, whereas the, the progressive Muslims don't really talk about it because they don't they don't really know anything, you know, except or, aside or, from... Or, 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 well, their the safety could be jeopardized too. They their safety could be jeopardized. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. So, a lot of them are closeted. You're right. So, the, so I think that that is that's that visibility is powerful because you look at it. You're like, oh, so this is an option too. And when you're 16 or 17 or you're one of those kids that you know you get messages from all the time, um, for them that's really powerful. I think another yeah. thing is, and, and a, being at the right place at the right time is also very important. And the age is very important. I'm 35 years old, and the 17, 18 year old people can actually relate with me. And they go, mm-hmm. you know, like I mean. Yeah, okay, you're, you're a nice guy, you speak well in Pakistani, you speak okay uh, uh, Urdu, and you look all right, you don't have, you know, you're not, uh, and I, I don't know if you saw some of the videos, but I mean, I also get a lot of attacks on my face, on my appearance, how I look, and you know, there's a lanat, I don't know if your Western audience know the word, lanat means curse, you know, curse. like your face is cursed. It's like ugly, it's just disgusting because you've left Islam. And there's a common belief in Pakistani Islam only, not, not mainly in Arabic Islam, that when you believe in Islam, you get this nur, the light, this beauty on your face. So, <laughs> so then, you know, and, and you all know that what Zakir Naik looks like. Um, so, 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 so these guys actually say, okay. So the people who listen to me, they go, okay, well, he's not really that bad looking either. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm good looking. Or what's not, oh, but no, I'm you're, you're good looking. It's you, okay. You can, you can say it. it, it it's besides the point. But, but the point is that when they see that, they go, okay. I remember, I remember listening to a, a, a testimony from, from, a, from, a, uh, from a Soviet woman who said when, the, when Stalin paraded the, the, the Nazis through in front of the Kremlin, and then she saw these Nazi soldiers and she said, well, they didn't have any tails or horns over their head. They were just like our boys. Um, so it's, it's, it's just this propaganda that is so powerful. Unfortunately, that was 1945, I think. But, but this is happening in the 21st century. That it's still so sad that people do believe that, okay, if you leave Islam, then your face turns into some really ugly looking face or whatnot. So well, you, you know what? When... Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Finish what you're saying. Yeah, no, that, that's what I was saying. So, so it's sad that they, but then they can relate to it. So a 17 year old kid might not relate to a 60 year old uh, man who, who's saying the same thing. Just like, I mean, I wouldn't be able to relate to a 16 year old kid who's giving me a lecture on something. I probably will. But, but naturally, when people, especially when there's an opinion that, that goes against your core belief in the worldview, then, you, then, then people tend to listen to people they can relate with um, and, and re- they, they can relate with someone who's 10, 15 years older rather than 60 years older than them or 50 years older than them or 30 years younger than them. So I, I, I think that it ha- it, it, there's a huge market that we are capturing. And um, yeah, I was, yeah. And then when you were talking about the whole face thing, I was thinking uh, when I was in high school. No, I was in ninth grade, I think. I was like 13 or 14 when the Salman Rushdie fatwa came out, the yeah, satanic yeah. verses, and his face was everywhere. But the thing is, his face did look fucked up. Like it genu- have you, you know, like when he had 
those old pictures, he just looked like this. He had these droopy eyes, right? Because he has a little bit of ptosis in his eyelids. He had these droopy eyes, and, you know, he was kind of a little bald looking. Um, And uh, and I I looked pretty good now. Yeah, well, now he he aged well, but when he was younger. um, Oh, yeah. Like, I'll... (laughs) I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's sad that people think that way, you know, like, I mean, appearances have got nothing to do with that. I mean, then, then I was like, okay, look at Zayn Malik, the One Direction guy. He, he, he was very beautiful, handsome. Yeah. All the Paki boys and girls are just drooling over him and proud that, oh, he's Pakistani and all that. But then the moment he said yeah. ex-Muslim. They started finding his photos in which, you know, like he's half asleep or whatnot. And the pay- photos have been taken from a bad angle. Oh, yeah. look, this is what happens when you leave Islam. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah, like. yeah, you, yeah. You're right. I mean, someone could could probably target that. But again, I mean, that's what I do. That that, that you show them. Yeah, I, I was gonna. Yeah, yeah. So for, the for those people who are, for, for people who are listening uh, to this on audio, I just kind of showed an old uh, picture from the '80s of Salman Rushdie to Harris. So uh, that's a, that's what's going on. I have to explain that for people who just listen to audio. But. Um, uh, yeah. So and anyway, I, th- I think the channel is fantastic. I think the stuff that you're doing is amazing. I, like I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, this is insane. Like I, because I, I remember when I started uh, writing about this stuff, and it was you know with with Huff Post, and later on, um, when the book came, even when the book came out, the book came out later, uh, you know, a few years ago. But uh, it, it was the same thing. Like every day, right? I'd I'd wake up and I'd have emails. I'd have. Um, you know, the, the Facebook inbox, I, you know, just all of this stuff was just full of messages, usually from, from young people. So it's pretty wild. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you... I get, I'm, I'm quite happy that I'm getting 10, 15 a day where Facebook has blocked me again. Uh, uh, Facebook has worked out a new way and I want to put it out there. So if someone does know what Facebook is doing. So Facebook, I think that what they've done is the moment I upload a video on Facebook, it gets right. flagged by Pakistan. So it's very quick. So straight away, not even five minutes later. So there's no human interaction involved. So what they do, they limit my feed. So what, what that happens, it doesn't come up on people's news feed or, you know, I don't get any engagement. So I put up the video like I was getting 500 likes and shares and comments or whatnot. But the moment I've uploaded a video, um, that's it. I get one, two like people who actually go in my profile to see what I'm doing. And then, yeah. um, and then it got attacked again. And now I'm totally blocked for 30 days. So you know what you should do so, on Facebook? Is that you should uh, get uh, one of the presidential candidates to sponsor your videos because uh, Mark Zuckerberg has come out and said that, that he's not going to ban any political ads, even if they're full of lies, even if they're misleading. So he, wow. he got into a lot of crap for it. So just do that and you won't get right. banned. All right. <laughs> Every, uh, everything I'll, else I'll, is I'll, I'll, I'll give him a call after this. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we want to talk about a couple of things that are happening in the part of the world that both of us hail from, Harris, you and I. Um, and that is the Indian subcontinent. So, you know, Pakistan and India, uh, there's quite a lot happening in both places. Uh, first of all, uh, we're going to get to this later, but India has just passed a new citizenship bill uh, that is causing a lot of controversy um, because it's being viewed as discriminatory against Muslims. And, you know, we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about it. Uh, but uh, a lot of people who are really mad about this are, are the Pakistanis. Meanwhile, the Pakistanis, just as of this last week, have sentenced a Fulbright scholar, an academic, a lecturer, a university lecturer named Junaid Hafiz to death. And this is infuriating. I mean, this is, you know, we had Asia Bibi, who was, uh, the, you know, the Christian woman uh, who was accused of blasphemy and then sentenced. And, and she was in jail for, I think, better part of a decade. And then recently she was able to get out. Uh, and uh, she came to Canada. Uh, but now this Junaid Hafiz guy, he has been in solitary confinement since 2014. Right? Like seven, I guess that's like six, six years, years, seven yeah. years. Nearly six yeah. years, yeah. In, in solitary confi- confinement. And, um, and then he, his case went to trial. And uh, they've sentenced him to death for making uh, a- allegedly derogatory remarks about Muhammad or his wives on Facebook. Like for a Facebook post, um, and and this guy's like you know by all accounts is a brilliant guy. He grew up in Pakistan, came from very modest means and modest background, um, earned a Fulbright scholarship uh, to go and study in I think it was in Mississippi, uh, you know, and then he returned to Pakistan to be a lecturer there, and uh, now That's he's the mistake, been in jail. 
that's, yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the only mistake he made. That, th- th- this guy is someone, Midu made a video yesterday. This guy is someone that he, uh, he sh- he, he's an asset for Pakistan. Pakistan should be, but Pakistan has a habit of, um, uh, you know, just writing just, off all of it. <laughs> yeah, just writing off. I mean, uh, the, the, the whole, forget about Pakistan. The whole Muslim carved out the, the first Muslim Nobel laureate and whatnot um, is it, it, disgraceful. But so Sorry, what happened? I, with I, I think I think on my side you got cut out a little bit for a second. But okay. you were talking about Abdul Salam, right? Abdul Salam was a Nobel Prize winning physicist. Yeah, um, the only the only Muslim one. But they're they they are they are uh, insisting that he's not Muslim, and his grave, his tombstone was uh, that the word Muslim was crossed out, and uh, I, be, I believe there was a time when his grave was ransacked as well. But I don't know, yeah. uh, but anyway, so so Pakistan has a habit of he's, doing so that. He's, in, yeah, on, he's on, um, just Muslim. spitting in the faces of those. They, yeah. Uh, so with Junaid Hafiz, uh, yes, you said he came from a very modest background. He he was brilliant. He 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 was well, he was he was pretty much like you, where he actually went to King Edward Medical College. I know mm-hmm. it is absolutely anyone who does the FSC, which is a high school. Yeah. In, I, I actually correction. I, I went to Aga Khan University in Karachi. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I know, so, but, but you went to you went to medical school. So, oh, so, like so a, like an, yeah, an elite medical yeah, yeah. school, yeah, that so, kind of thing. Yeah. So, so in Pakistan, um, if, if you're in high school, you have to get in FSC, which is the eleventh and twelfth grade. You have to get, I think, something like seven hundred and forty fifty marks out of eleven fifty. Uh, Correct. Which is, which is unbelievably very hard. Only two hundred people, three hundred people get it. So out of that, first batch goes to the medical college. There are about three or four good medical colleges in Lahore. And he went to King Edward, which is the best the one. So he, yeah, is the top one. That's where and my sister so went to. Yeah. yeah. My sister so graduated was, from K. So this guy was absolutely brilliant. After, I think, a year or two, maybe, he said, no, you know what? I'm going to go study English literature. And then he, he was, again, like he changed it midway. And he actually got the scholarship. And then he went to Jackson, Mississippi, and he went to State University and did his master's there in English literature. And then, I don't know what got to him, he went back to Pakistan. Um, and and he, he went back to a university where I think he had done his graduation or something from there. Uh, so, um, uh, Bahauddin Zikriya University in Multan, yeah. which is in yeah. South Punjab. Um, and it's a, it's a very conservative city. It's not like Lahore or Karachi or Islamabad, where you could possibly get away with it uh, but he was in Multan because he was from there so allegedly he was secretly running a Facebook troll account by the name of Mullah Munafik the, 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 looking, looking at it just, just saying looking at his uh, at his intellect he, he's, he's not some troll who's 19 year old who's angry at uh, things or what not he, he, he's an academic he, he's Mm. He's into literature. He, he he's an intelligent man, so he would be putting arguments forward. So so I don't think it would be like one some kind of a troll who's just abusing Muhammad or um, uh, abusing his wife and his and, and that's something I'm sorry to say to Muslims. That is very bad for you guys that you the guy you worship had so many women in his life that unfortunately it's a you know like it's a very easy soft target for us. So I don't know why anyone wouldn't criticize. But whether he did it or not, the whole debate so sorry finish the story so so some people jamate tulba and, and they were affiliated with this guy hadim rizvi's tariq tariqe tahafuzay namus salat which means protection protecting the sanctity of um, of the holy scripture um, so so all these islamized militant organizations they they're militant in a sense that they will grab sticks and they will come at you 2025 20, and they'll start beating the, the crap out of you the the beaten professors they've beaten so many people students and whatnot so everyone's scared of them the, the everyone from teachers to professors to students everyone so they accused him that he he's the guy behind the ID, Mullah Munafik, on um, and it's just one ID, Mullah Munafik, on a page secular, mm-hmm. so-called can, secular. Can you li- talk up? Can you explain to the audience what Munafik means? We have a lot of people okay, so, who so Munafik, don't know the language. So okay, so it's a trolling word, which is a word I've given to this uh, uh, the the mufti mm-hmm. that I spoke with yesterday. Munafik means hypocrite. Mullah means an uh, a, you know like a like a imam, like a guy with a beard that. 
Yeah. So 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 he caught, so he had a name. It could be so it could be a troll ID. We don't know whether there have been some um, questions been raised by Amnesty International whether that was investigated properly or not. I don't even want to go into that. Uh, but the, on a so-called uh, this channel, this page was called or group was called so-called Pakistani liberals. Um, and he was obviously, you know, some uh, allegedly he was making uh, uh, blasphemous content about Muhammad, saying blasphemous things about Muhammad and his wives and his the number of sexual relationships and sex slaves or whatnot he had. So, mm. so these guys somehow accused him that he's the guy. I don't know how they found out that it's this guy. The other side, Junaid Hafiz's family say that he obviously he was he was exposed to the uh, to the western world he went to america at a high level you know he studied and he studied english literature and art and cinema so he had very secular liberal views now, now i can buy that i even though i don't want to get into that but i can buy that point that um, people the moment in especially in these conservative backward cities uh, you can get away with it in lahore islamabad possibly but not even in the universities there as well. They're, they're still the, these these students, uh, Islamist students are everywhere. Um, but but he um, he was just pro propagating his secular views. So, but you anyone who propagates secular views, Western views, all of a sudden he becomes an anti-Islam person, and then blasphemy is, is the easiest subject. Had he been Ahmadi or had he been um, uh, a Christian or someone else, it would have been even easier. But anyway, so he was arrested. He, he was first fired from, from the university, and then he was arrested. He's been in solitary confinement for six years. People have been trying. We purposefully have not been speaking. Um, I, I had uh, passed the message on to Prime Minister Imran Khan as well. I didn't hear back, um, but I know he was, he was made aware of it. He wasn't aware of the story uh, about, I don't know, about a year ago when I, when I passed that information on to him. Uh, I was told that, okay, he's now heard of him. Um, so I thought, okay, maybe. But but I wasn't speaking about it openly because I didn't want to draw any attention. Like Ayaz's army just kind of blew out of proportion. And there, there was a mm. there was a, a Twitter hashtag, hang Ayaz Nazami. Yeah, so I yeah me too. Everybody like was calling. Like this was a number one trending hashtag in Pakistan where everyone was calling for the execution of this guy. Ayaz Nazami. Because he was secular. Yeah, it was insane. But he, well, he, 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 he's also an ex-Muslim atheist, Ayaz so yeah. He's also another story. And again, we don't talk about these things because we don't want to draw any attention to them. But I think enough is enough. So anyway, so so I thought, okay, maybe, maybe they will do what they did with Asya Bibi. They would quietly smuggle him out or something they will do. So we haven't been talking about him, but obviously the, the, the sentence has now come out. There's a point that... You, so first of all, I want to say why I didn't want to get into that is because the whole debate is wrong. The whole debate is about, oh, he's innocent. He did not blaspheme. I think the debate should be even so if what? He did. Even if he did blaspheme, what's the big deal? Why are emotions you killing him? Are not, yeah. Emotions are not more important than a human life. So that should be the debate. And, and I think a lot of people are starting to see that because they're, seeing, they're still seeing it from a Muslim angle. They're saying, okay, well, our religion is about compassion and forgiving, forgiveness. So even if he did say something, and obviously he's denying these charges. So... He's denying it. He doesn't own these charges or, or, or own these views. Then okay, then forgive him. What's the? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, okay. Even in Islam, the, the, uh, as far as the apostasy is concerned, the, the all three school of thoughts, uh, sorry, four school of thoughts, all have. Uh, the, the, they all give you three days. Some give you three days of repentance. Some give you whatnot. But if you repent and you say, okay, well, I, I don't own these views anymore, and I'm a Muslim again, or let's just say in this case, I don't own these views anymore. Then you, then you, you're, you are not beheaded. You're not killed in that case. So in case of blasphemy, and a lot of Muslim scholars say as well, there's no, there's no death penalty for blasphemy. Um, I, I think these Pakistanis, these Desi, Desi Landege, um, these Muslims, they try to, these try, they try to score extra points by showing how much we love Muhammad, that we can't even hear anything about it, which is, which is again, it's, it's just a, it's just, I, I don't know where it got smuggled into, but... Um, well, yeah. people like, I mean, there is an element of the, the whole mob psychology thing. People like pariahs to beat up on. I mean, it happens, you, you see it online here in the social media, this one person says something that no, nobody likes, everybody will gang up on him, they'll get fired from their job, they'll get, you know, all this stuff, it's, it's a... 
it, it's part of human psychology. And when it comes to something like religion, when it's state sanctioned, when it's state sanctioned, then it just takes on a whole new um, ugly face. So, you know, th there's a, a, and what's it, what's interesting about this, well, I mean, not interesting, it's actually very unfortunate, is that um, throughout this time, solitary confinement for six years, uh, they've been trying to get a trial, trying to get a trial, uh, but uh, they kept on delaying the trial as well. And then one of his lawyers, was, I think Rashid Rahman was his name? Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. correctly, but yeah, so yeah, Rashid right. Rahman. So he agreed to represent him, to defend him. Murdered. He got murdered. They killed in him. In his chambers. In his chambers. So, and the, the sad part is the, the, the two gunmen came in at, at the proceeding, at the court proceeding, in, right in front of the judge. They said, you will not appear in the second, in the next hearing. And the next day, two men came in his chambers, shot him point blank, dead. And then, I, I mean, you know, I mean, we, we, we often talk about how, you know, like if we were in Pakistan and these countries, we would not be doing what we're doing. But I mean, we, kudos to these, some of these brave people who, is, yeah. who know, who know that this is it, this, they're going to get killed. And okay, not only just that after this guy was shot, killed, there's another lawyer who's representing him at the moment. He's also been threatened, but he's still representing him and two other cases of blasphemy. Um, we met one. We we met Asia Bibi's lawyer in Pakistan, in, and in he, pa he in Amsterdam, in Netherlands, yeah, yeah. in Amsterdam, yeah, and yeah, he gave did. up his he gave up his Netherlands citizenship because he wanted to go back and help these people. I mean, these guys are brilliant, remarkable people. But the the the, uh, the travesties that, uh, as you said, is state sanctioned. I mean, the state is not recognizing it. Now, I want to go back to what, what actually is happening. So, I mean, I still believe that Imran Khan is probably not happy with that, but he's in so much, such a mess uh, that, that, you know, he can't even do anything. But the judiciary of Pakistan... By, by put, such a mess, you mean like Pakistan's economy and Pakistan like economy that. and even, even his political a, disputes with other people. And uh, the, the, the point to be noted here is that this country used to have a very high civilized... Anglo-Saxon inspired westernized bureaucracy. Yes, it was an Eastern country, but but because the British were there for two hundred years, the, a lot of these laws are inspired by Anglo-Saxon laws, or they have those fu fundamentals. And, and and all of this, we time and time again, we say that, that this this started falling apart at the time of Bhutto, and then Zia just put the final nail in the coffin. Mm -hmm. The judiciary also used to be very liberal, but now this judiciary in Pakistan has been infiltrated by these by these by these um, by these Islamists. Another key point to note here is a lot of Pakistanis brag about, "Oh, we're not like Iran, we're not like Saudi Arabia. We have proper international justice system." No, actually, they don't. No, uh, they don't. behind. Behind every judge, there is a there's a mullah, like a imam or a religious man. He's sitting there, who's overseeing everything. Whether this is, um, whether this is um, a in accordance with Islamic jurisprudence or not. If they can't, it, it, so in this case, like a blasphemy or whatnot, people would say, okay, this is not in accordance with uh, our Sharia law, and uh, it, it is blasphemy, clear case of blasphemy. Then the, the judge could be, over, his decision could be over, overridden, and it could be thrown out. And also, he could also be killed, because um, at a session court, um, which is like a very basic level court, there's no, there's no protection or anything. So um, a couple of days ago, uh, actually a week earlier, this, um, uh, this verdict came in for Pakistan's ex-president Pervez Musharraf. Despite that there's no such law, the judge passed the verdict that if he dies before we hang him, because he has also been awarded death sentence, if he dies before we hang him, drag his body to D Square, which is very close to the parliament house, hang him there for three days. Now, that's not even in the laws of Pakistan. So, and, and you wonder, these people who are sitting in Supreme Court level or at a high level, how, how Islamized are their brains yeah. that, that, that they want to carry out these kind of sentences? So Pakistan judicial... But, but to be clear, this whole thing, the Janet Hafiz trial, the death sentence that came out, this was not a Supreme Court thing, right? This is a, no, no, a lower no, level not, court. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, it, and it can be appealed, correct? Yeah, yeah of course, it, 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 it will be appealed. I, to be honest, I mean, I still put in that 90, 95%. I'm confident that he will be released at, at a later point. Maybe it, yeah, might, take, I, it I, might take five, six years. 
Uh, yeah. But he, his 12, 13 years of this bright man have been wasted and the message has been very clearly sent to every religious dissident out there that do not even think about doing it. You will be ruined. You will ruin in jail. His parents uh, had a... F and that's the irony. His, his father actually sent pilgrims to, to Mecca for the Hajj mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 event. So his... his um, Business has been demolished. You know, there's nothing left. He spent a lot of money. Um, they've been trying to, you know, get the sun out. And you can imagine how how traumatic the yeah, whole experience. Must be torture, yeah. Jesus. Um, and uh, uh, the other thing is, I, I think the fact that, you know, because you were talking about, you, know, you uh, there's a tough place that we're all in because, like you said about Hangayas and Zami or Jinnathis. On the one hand, you don't want to talk about it too much to draw attention to it because you know they get. They get in more trouble and becomes an issue. On the other hand, when you're in a situation like he is right now, um, now the there's one no thing, choice. yeah, yeah. And, and now not only is there no choice, but I think it's uh, actually uh, it's essential to talk about it because um, one of the reasons that uh, Asia Bibi was released, one of the reasons that you know Raif Badawi they stopped flogging him, uh, Maziar Bahari was released in Iran. And, and the, the reason these things happen is because of international pressure, and exactly. these countries. And they are susceptible to it. Um, exactly. So yeah, the, one, I, I was going to move on to that. Yeah, I was going to move on. on to that, and that, that's exactly what we're planning to do. I spoke with Mariam, um, and I also think that here there's a high consulate in Melbourne and in Sydney and in Canberra. Um, probably won't be able to do it in all the, all the three of these cities, but in London we've got a big community there. Uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of Muhammad Said from ex-Muslims in North America, but we're thinking that we should have mass protests in front of Pakistani high consulates. Because um, with Asia Bibi, again, uh, it's not a competition or anything, but there, was, there were a lot of organized Christian movement behind her. Unfortunately, in our case, with, with atheists, again, I'm not putting out he's an atheist, but let's just say he's an atheist or not. We, we don't have any confirmation. Again, I'm saying that because I don't want to draw the attention. But um, uh, let, if he is an atheist or not, what not, whatever, but forget about he's an atheist. But no Christian is gonna. Uh, they might, they might come, but they won't come as hard as as um, as they would for Asia Bibi. So I think the only thing we can do is protest, protest, protest in front of um, the Pakistani High Commission. Uh, if we can draw as much attention to BBC and uh, look, these new, all these news news outlets have actually covered this story in their daily news cycle, but that's it, it'll be gone. Um, so it has, to be, it has to be highlighted over and over again. And, and if we can put pressure on Pakistan government, embarrass them, I think embarrassment is the key here, that on one hand, you're criticizing India for its anti-humanitarian citizenship amendment acts or whatnot, and on the other hand, you're doing the same thing. So how does that make sense? So embarrassment is the key here. I don't care whether Imran Khan or the government is like, yeah, okay. I, it's none of our business. I mean, what we care about is there's an innocent man on death row. Uh, probably you're going to waste another five, six years of his life. Yes, Mr. Prime Minister is going to make your life a bit harder if you do make another decision to release him like, like, like you did for Asia Bibi. Yes, it might make your life difficult, but we don't care about that. So I think that's the only, as you, you, you said it rightly, Initially, we didn't want to draw attention while the, we were waiting for the verdict. But now the verdict has come out. It's not favorable. So screw them. Yeah, it's Australia. At one point, I, I guess in this case, it would be counterintuitive. But I've always wanted to see a ex-Muslims doing a blasphemous protest outside of Pakistani thing, like with like blasphemous signs. I've just never seen that. And I feel like it would be such a nice change. In this case, it, would be, it wouldn't really help the case. I think it would be counterintuitive. But um, I'm not sure. Generally, actually. I'm actually not sure because you know I actually thought like about just it. you know you go antagonize a sign and say okay arrest me, do it here we're all black. Yeah, something like that. You know, yeah, something burning like the Quran that. would probably. You're right because it, it, it is true. Like sense. spreading the blame, spreading the risk is is a is a big thing, and I'll I'll tell you that. I mean, I th I think that um, in the last ten years the kind of security we needed at events and things like that um, just as little as five or six years ago, we always needed yeah. at least police patrol. We needed bag checks at events. We did, we used to do all these things. And a lot of that is uh, just unnecessary. And, and, and the reason it's become unnecessary is because everybody's doing it. You remember when the Danish cartoons came out and you looked at it like, wow, this is crazy. I haven't ever seen this in a mainstream newspaper. 
it was so rare. But now, like the everybody draw Muhammad day, a day. If you Google Muhammad cartoons, they're everywhere. It's, and and when you spread the risk, you know who are they going to attack? Who are they going to go with? So they just say, okay, yeah, you know, people are going to do this. People are going to blaspheme. So you know the key to fighting blasphemy, I think, is to blaspheme. You have to do it, and it's not just a matter of. Uh, you know, well, it does it really send the right message? If you're doing it, are you antagonizing Muslims by doing it? And, you know, it's, it's not really about that. It's it's about um, doing it specifically because you're not supposed to. You know, Harris, I think you're frozen. Did I lose you? Oh. Hmm. Oh, there you are. You're back. You were frozen for a bit. Did you? Yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, I was. I was listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Look, you're right. I mean, see, the, and and I think this is why I think my Urdu channel might make a difference at some point because now I'm seeing these people grovel. Oh, look, please. Okay, you can you can criticize our religion. You can you can you can make uh, critical points on Muhammad's life and his wives and whatnot. But but just try to be a bit, bit just 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 be and you know just be a bit more respectful, and I'm like okay doesn't you know it, more we do it more they see okay people are doing it, especially yeah. in the Urdu language I think now that's our next step. Mariam Namazi has been doing that in, in Iranian language, so we've done that in the English world. So we have tamed the radical Muslim English speaking Muslims. You know, like they know that there are ex Muslims out there. We they know that okay, there are people who hold Allah's gay sign and you know, or, or, or they, they do all these kind of things. And you know, they again, as you said, because there's so many of doing it. So in the same sense, now we need to do that in the country. all these radical extremists come in. You know, like those those people who chant songs like "Behead those who insult Muhammad." They they're not watching your secular jihadis. You know, they they are not watching. They're not watching these English conversations. So when we do that in Urdu, and which is probably why I'm drawing a lot of heat, but I think it's okay because a lot of people are talking about it. Even the moderate Muslims are like, yeah, okay, what not, whatever. So I think it's eventually going to change. But these people have to understand one thing: that you might be able to shut down someone like Janet Hafiz, who you you know who um, who who was harmless and he was in he was in your in, in he was in your city, he was in your grip. Who else are you going to stop? How are you going to stop Haris Sultan? How are you going to stop Ali Rizvi? How, how, how far? Stop? Yeah, how far are you going to? How go? far are you going to go? Even if somehow you do find out where I live and you bypass all my security, you somehow you know dodge my pit bulls and you, you know my my gun is nowhere near me. Even if you <laughs> bypass all of that um, and you get me, you still have Ali. Rizvi. It's a it's a <laughs> game of it. Really, is a game of whack a mole. I mean, we're at the point where you know you. You knock one down, and uh, you know just ten others will rise up in their place, and yeah. that has so, happened. So, it's, and they it, need to understand that. They need to understand that. That okay, you can silence Janet Hafiz, but there's so many out there, and yeah. the world is not falling apart. There's so many out there. This guy who did that in Norway, and I know the right wingers do that, and we we try to keep distance ourselves from them. But I'm like, okay, he's burning the Quran. I don't care. And then this guy comes in. Everyone took his photo. Very freaky screenshot that they took. Um, and uh, uh, you know, you might have seen a lot of Pakistanis and mm. Indians and Muslims are u- using his photo as their display photo. And I think we should do that too. I think we should put Janet Hafiz as our photo. But again, it's just yeah. one of those. But um, uh, so, so that they make them into a hero. One one guy actually had his photo as a display photo, and he just came across my video, and then he started asking questions. So, okay, okay, all right. And then he was, I could, I could, that he was actually absorbing the information, and he was. His mind was ticking. It wasn't like, yeah, fuck you, you know, like, sorry. He, he wasn't like that. Yeah. So it's, um, uh, it, it's just happening and, and they need to understand. And I think at the, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, we need to embarrass the Pakistani government. Uh, yeah, that has to, it has to happen. And they're very susceptible to embarrassment. That's the thing. They, they technically are. But it's, it's just a, it's a tough situation right now because Imran Khan is under a lot of pressure uh, because things aren't going so well for him. There's this connection with the Saudis where, you know, he's pretty much doing everything that they say. Uh, there's that thing with China where he keeps on talking about the persecution of Muslims here Sorry. and there, everywhere. I think my internet froze. 
Oh, it did. No, no, no. It's can okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, oh. yeah I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can see you clearly. All right. So, um, yeah, no, I was saying with, with Pakistan, uh, there's so much stuff going on. He was talking about persecution everywhere, but the, when it comes to China, they won't say anything when China's actually got concentration camps, like underground cages that can barely fit a human being. And they've got people squeezed in there and staying there indefinitely. The, the whole thing is, um, I, I don't really know what he wants yeah, to do versus what he can do. Yeah, so there's so much. Um, so he's, he is in a tough situation. So in terms of susceptibility uh, to pressure, also that is kind of more of a question mark now than it used to be in the past. But uh, let's see, what do, you, what do you think is going to happen? So you're saying that you're pretty sure that eventually they're going to let him go. Unfortunately, I, it's going to take a long time. Yeah, I, I look again. We gotta understand Pakistan does intimidate the ju- judicial system and this law that they have, um, e- the blasphemy law that they have, two ninety five A B C and all these crappy ones. They they use them to intimidate people, and also they the, the government gets held hostage as well because they're scared of the public outcry. Um, so they try to just let it go, sweep it under the carpet or whatnot. Um, so they're going to do pretty much what they did with Asia Bibi, who was also sentenced. Um, I think she was sentenced to death. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and then eventually we went to Supreme Court. And Supreme Court judges also have higher security. So they, a Supreme Court judge can be a bit more, uh, a, a bit more open in, in, you know, in letting someone go or not. A session court judge, he probably would have been dead. I think there were eight judges. This in a, in a lower court, this case was heard before eight different judges. So, yeah. um, uh, and, and that's why it got delayed so much. Because nobody wanted to touch it. So Supreme Court might be able to release him at some point and they're going to be outcry and whatnot. Um, and then he will be released. But again, as I said, it's going to take a bit of time. Um, and we, we, he's going to waste a lot of his time. He was, uh, I think he was 27 when he was arrested, 26, 27. Um, he's probably going to come out when he's 42, 43. Yeah. So th- there's another thing. I wonder sometimes whether the fear of an outcry is more of a deterrent for people to do the right thing rather than the actual outcome. Because, I, and I've, I've, I've seen this several times. So, so you know, there was this, just to, again, remind people who are not familiar with it, uh, that, you know, the, the governor of Punjab was the, um, the largest province in Pakistan. Right, which is one of the most populous countries in the world. Right, so the governor of Punjab, his name was Salman Tasir. He showed solidarity with Asia Bibi, the Christian woman who was sentenced to death for blasphemy, and he did a photo op with her. And uh, when he did that, just for showing solidarity and, and supporting her case, uh, he was shot dead by his own bodyguard. And that okay, okay, fine. He was shot dead by his bodyguard. The problem is that his bodyguard became a hero. Uh, when the bodyguard was hanged, when he was executed, uh, the crowds, I mean, it just Google, uh, to do a Google image search of Mumtaz Qadri um, funeral. And funeral. you'll see, it's incredible, the crowds that attended him, They're bu- they built shrines to him. There were lawyers, like hundreds of lawyers who came out to support him and support what he did by murdering the governor. And incidentally, you know, on this podcast recently, we had, well, recently, some time ago, we had Shan Tassir, who's the son of, of Salman Tassir, the governor who was murdered. So th- this is kind of where uh, this country is coming from. But with Asia Bibi, I saw that when they initially acquitted her, they said, okay, this is going to be this huge outcry. We have to be very careful. We have to do it on the down low and, and all of this stuff. And then, and then what happens is that uh, there is a big fear of an outcry. Everybody thought there was going to be something like the Das Gadri funerals. And yes, there were. You know, there were a lot of protesters who came out. And after two or three days, it just, it's like, it's like a, you know, those Twitter controversies where everybody's on it for two days and then they find a new hashtag or the next shiny object. And they move no, on. you got to, you got to, Ali, you got to understand one thing. What they did was they, so, so this Das Gadri and this whole move, was actually, even in this case, as I said earlier, the guy, Khadim Rizwi, 
he became his career was launched after that Mumtaz Qadhi, the guy who shot the governor. His career was launched as you know this new protector of the holy scripture. Junaid Hafiz was also yeah. accused by a group of people who were affiliated with this, with with his group. Um, so he this guy bit more than what he could chew. So he um, he he said, "Kill Imran Khan, the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Kill the Chief Justice of Pakistan. Kill the Army Chief." So you know, he, yeah. he 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 ta- targeted all of them. So when they gave that verdict, my uncle Khadim Rizvi. No, 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 there's no relation. There's no relation no, whatsoever. Right. I, I would have disowned him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just for having the name, I would have forced him to change his name. Um, the, so he, so, so the, he was actually arrested for saying that. The verdict was released around the same time. He was, I've been told, they beat the crap out of him. Mm-hmm. Um, that 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 uh, Hadim Rizvi guy. The army doesn't tolerate this kind of nonsense. So all his men, all these fanatics and all that, they all, they all were dispersed. So that's why we didn't see such a big outcry after that. So, so why? Why did that happen for him then? And why did the army go against him, but they wouldn't do that for Janet Hafiz? International pressure? Is that the only reason? Like, the, wh- no, 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 no. no. No, because it's just no. They're just far too many. You can you can do all of that risk. You can go through all hoo ha. You can arrest thousand people, and and you know you can arrest these people who are influential people. Khadim Rizvi is an influential guy. When he was arrested too, a lot of people protested as well. They wanted him to be released, but they were like, nope, right. we're not going to release him. And they they started beating the crap out of everyone. The police and the paramilitary forces beating the crap out of every all of these Islamists, which was a good thing, you know. Like I mean, it's against again human rights, but you know I don't care. <laughs> these, these people probably deserve it, but um, they. <laughs> This is probably what they will have to do with Janet Hafiz. They would probably have to do that. But again, can you do that again every six months? What's going to happen with Ayaz and Zami? Are they going to have to do it again after six months? So they've created this. So this is why I think Pakistan and it, why it is such a, it's been such a failure because it never does anything wholeheartedly. They can control these Islamists. The military can. There's, trust me, there's no bigger um, a bad guy in the mili- in Pakistan than the military, and the yeah. military can grab these people. Military can grab these people, they can arrest them, and they can beat the crap out of them, like they did with Taliban. They did that yeah. with Taliban. You still watch a video on YouTube. There was this. They were beating the hell out of um, of certain captured Taliban and trying to get information out of them. And there, there's a video for them and how army soldiers are beating the hell out of them. Even I was feeling, well, oh, maybe, you know, they are Taliban, but come on, <laughs> you know, yeah. because they were ordinary people. So we're not, we're not, we're not used to seeing well, violence. But uh, my point yeah. is, military yeah. can do that. So what, so they will, ha- why, I don't understand why they don't do it all together. But I think this is why some people say that military itself has some Islamist elements and they also feed these guys. Yeah. I, it's just you know, and I think that it's a culture of violence. So you know, I've I've always heard in Pakistan, my uncles and everybody around, if someone did something terrible, like you know, they someone gang raped a fourteen year old, which is not uncommon there, unfortunately, and then they'd say, oh, we they should hang them and skin them alive in public. That's the kind of thing yeah. that they say, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it, when you do that. You just perpetuate perpetuate this this uh, sort of violent mentality, right? Absolutely. Even more, and and you're sure you can empathize with it. You're like, okay, if they did that, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to lose any sleep at night if they hand hang them and skin them and everything. But but overall, from a larger societal context, that's a problem because then what you have is when you when you tell people, okay, well, we need to have education about consent or education about you know, rape culture, things like that. People will be like, oh, come on, don't be such a pussy. But when you say, well, hang them and skin them alive, everyone's like, yeah. You know, and, and that's just not as effective. It's, it's just this bizarre kind of... You're, uh, look, you're the, right, but... You, look, you're right, but I, but I think we see, to some extent, we see that in, in the West as well, where we see people no, saying... No, we do. We do. That uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's hang or let's kill... The, the the pedophiles and whatnot, and we're like, yeah, and, and you're worried that if you say no, come on, then they'll be like, oh, you you you, you, you support that, you love pedophiles. the pedophiles, yeah, yeah. So so it, I I think the I I think it comes not only just from anger as well, but it also comes from a defensive kind of a mechanism to somehow show that hey, look, I totally 
despise raping 14 year old of course every, any normal person would do it but they go above and beyond like and it's, the whole blasphemy law actually works on the same principle as well these people are probably wanking or watching gay movies and d doing everything that is un-islamic they're doing all of that but then all of a sudden they, to show to the world hey you know i actually love prophet muhammad more than my life uh, you know most of these yeah. people everyone would say that i love i love muhammad more than my life I bet you 95, no, actually 99% of these people would not do anything about it. They would not, even if they saw you, they're not going to come and punch you. They're not going to come yeah, and punch no, you. They won't. Because, you know, they, a, they, would, a, they, would be aware of, they would be aware of the consequences. But only 1%, 2%, unfortunately, as Sam Harris said, that, that 1% is such a huge number. They can probably come and, you know, be motivated enough to kill, hunt you down and stab you and kill you or whatnot. But, but this is the culture that they've created that, okay, we have to show to the world we love Muhammad. They don't even love Muhammad. This guy lived fourteen hundred yeah. years ago. They, yeah. and they, they will they will jump over each other to outdo, out moralize each other. I mean, and that yes. that is also part of the mob mentality, and you see that also on social yeah. media. You're like, well, you know, well, white people are privileged. What you really need to do is be a feminist. Well, if you're a feminist, well, if you're a white feminist, then it's not good enough. You have to be a feminist of color. Oh well, if you're a feminist of color, well, no, that's not really good enough. You might yeah. be a turf, so you have to be a trans feminist of color. It's the whole thing is just. Everybody becomes, there's this idea of who's more oppressed and then that person has more of a, a, a thing. And, and you know, we, the, it, this is what it is. It's, it's an oppression thing. It's like, you know, you insulted our prophet. You're attacking us. This is Islamophobia. This is the whole world is against Islam. This victimization syndrome is, uh, I mean, it, it is the, the, the premier tool of, of demagoguery. And it happens in, in, in mob mentality. This is how it works. But so, hey, listen, let's just uh, transition now. Oh, speaking of transitioning, over to um, just next door to Pakistan, um, where there is just a massive rise of uh, Hindu and Hindutva nationalism, right? Mm -hmm. Which is uh, this this fervor, this Hindu national fervor, and, and uh, India is a secular pluralist democracy, right? And in name, and it, it really has been. I mean, in the it sense, been, you know, yeah. it, it is. It, yeah, it is. It's it's home to. Uh, the second or third largest Muslim population in the world. A lot of people don't realize this, that Indonesia is the largest Muslim population country uh, in the world. Uh, India is uh, second, according to some you know, estimates, and, and third after Pakistan, uh, according to some estimates. So even though Muslims there are only about 13 14% of the population, uh, they do tend to be the second largest uh, or the third largest um, in number uh, in the world. So the, the large amount of Muslims... Uh, Muslims t have tended to do pretty well there. I mean, they've been on the cricket team, they've been in politics, they've uh, that all of the biggest actors and the biggest celebrities uh, in um, India have been. Uh, you know, the, many of them, a disproportionate number of them, have been have been Muslims. So they, Bollywood. yeah, exactly. Uh, especially especially in Bollywood, when it comes to the international phase of India, uh, you, see, you see a lot of them. And and they're generally progressive. And 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 another story I want to actually relate is one that I I think George Bush George W Bush sh told Fareed Zakaria because um, you know he was uh, he was introducing Fareed Zakaria to somebody. He said, "Look, you know Fareed Zakaria, this guy is from India. He's a Muslim from India. He's like you know it's the only place where we don't have any Muslims that are on the international terrorist list. There's been no international terrorist recognized international terrorist." who has been an Indian Muslim from the second largest Muslim population in the world, it hasn't happened, right? And the question is, why hasn't it happened? Is it because of uh, the Sufi influence there, uh, you know, compared to the Arab influence in Pakistan? Is it because it's a, they're a minority there, even though they're the largest population? You know, that question is up in the air. I, I don't think we have any clear, definitive answer to that. But the dynamics of India are really interesting. Now now what's happened is that uh, with this, um, you know, you've seen the rise of the far right around the world. That's certainly happening in India too. Um, I, I, it seems like the Hindutva people, like these Hindu nationalists have taken the religion of Hinduism and uh, it's becoming more and more indistinguishable from the way that Islamic jihadists work, right? They're you know, you see them forcing kids to say Jai Shri Ram, you know, which is pretty much the equivalent of uh, Allah Akbar now. Um, uh, there, there are mobs that are killing people for for eating beef. Uh, there are, and and now you have this 
citizenship bill. And and the thing with this is that it is, again, like we talked about Pakistan, I mean, this is also state sanctioned. So recently, and this is, you know, what we're going to talk about right now briefly, is that the, the CAB, it stands for the Citizenship Amendment Bill, uh, that was recently passed in India. So it's an act now. So it's the Citizenship Amendment Act now. Act. Yeah. And yeah. And uh, what? So the do you, actually, I've been talking for a while. So Harris, do you want to kind of explain what it is, or? Yeah. So so basically, so so basically, Citizenship Amendment Act in the in a nutshell is obviously proposed by um, uh, BJP, which is a Hindu nationalist or supposedly a Hindu nationalist party. Uh, it's right. a far right party, as opposed to Congress National Party, which is a uh, which is historically a, uh, a leftist party, a more and and. and uh, like in other Muslim countries as well, I mean, the left and right is all so messed up in, in India as well, you know, but they also appease a lot of Muslims as well, whereas Hindu BJP ends up looking more sensible one because Congress ends up acting like, a, you know, like like um, like most of the leftist parties in in the West where they're appeasing Muslims and, you know, they're saying that they're passing these uh, discriminatory laws like, okay, um, we're not going to interfere in the in the in the Muslim women issue like triple talaq and all that um, because they don't want to upset the minority. Whereas whereas BJP party says, okay, well, a Hindu woman has the same right and a Muslim woman should also have the same right. So people question BJP and they say, well, okay, they're not doing it in the name of protecting the Muslim women. They're doing that in the name of their animosity or their hatred towards Islam. So I said, okay, whatever that might be, but I'm just looking at who's coming out, um, so a woman, uh, a Muslim woman, will not be blackmailed by simply by being told talaq, 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 and get out, and then a man changes uh, his mind. Talaq means up. divorce, so this is divorce, what divorce, Harris is divorce, talking yeah. about, is that in, especially in Sunni Islam, yeah. you can divorce your wife as easily as just repeating the word divorce three times, um, and so yeah, that, that's that's what you're talking about. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so, so, uh, so, so B- BJP's intentions and motivations have been questioned before. That why they're doing it. But on the other hand, it always ends up looking like a saner option as opposed to the others. And you can understand why, when such a pluralistic and such a dynamic society like India, where there's so many different languages and ethnicities and so many different religions as well, it's always going to be a mess. So now, citizen citizenship amendment act put forward by BJP, by this party that is often questioned for its motivation, yet uh, ends up looking the saner one. They proposed a bill that the the non-Muslim minorities in countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, who are persecuted in the name of religion, can apply for Indian citizenship. They will start with people who had already migrated to India up until 2014, I believe. So there are thousands of Hindus who have emigrated from Pakistan into India illegally, and they've been sitting in the camps there. Um, and there's, uh, according to some reports, nearly 10,000 Hindus. I don't think I think it's a bit exaggerated, uh, but a, but a sitting minister in India in, in Pakistani Parliament, he actually said, I think it's still exaggerated that number, 10,000 a year that they would run out very quickly. Um, so so wait, wait, what you're saying is so so what what this uh, act is saying is that in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, Bangladesh. Where, where the majorities are Muslim, then there are, I know that the act includes, for instance, Christians, Sikhs, Parsis, Zoroastrians, um, Hindus, Jains, and, you know, a, a couple of, pretty much all of these religions have been listed. Like, these people who are minorities in these Muslim-majority countries who are being persecuted um, are allowed to come to India. They will be given a, a priority status over Muslims. Right? Yes, because the Muslims well, uh, no, are I mean, no, 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 no. But there is no reference to Muslims. At there all. isn't. Yeah, and I, no. because so, no, so but this the, is the implicit point. thing is the implicit yeah. thing is that those are Muslim majority countries. So they're the Muslims yeah. are the majoritarians who are doing the persecution. And there's sense, no denying yeah. in that. And, and see all the right. See this. It's is the true. Thing. Yeah, this is a key difference that nobody, everyone's missing out. So Pakistanis are jumping up and down. Oh, it's an inhumane bill. A lot of Indian leftists, secular, secularist Indians, are actually protesting in pretty much, you know, the tens of cities they're protesting in the universities and whatnot. They're pro- but they're both protesting for different reasons. So the Indian secularists who are actually protesting, they're, they're saying, 
that we are protesting because you should have included Muslims as well, like Rohingyas and the, the Muslims in China who are being persecuted, Ahmadis in Pakistan, you know, who Pakistan recognizes them as non-Muslim. Right. BJP, yeah, but BJP. Yeah, but, but that's them. right, Harris, isn't it? I mean, don't you think that's reasonable? They, yeah, but, yeah, 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 no, no, but, but listen to that. So, so I'll, I'll give you my reasoning. So, so that's a good reason for them to do that, that, okay, that should happen too. But on the other hand, in Muslim countries, like Pakistanis, for example, uh, but, but they're not denying, listen to that, but they're not denying the fact that there are persecuted non-Muslim persecuted communities in these countries. So, right. so, so what these Pakistanis are doing, they're, they're just calling it anti-Muslim Islamophobia. So, so are they recognizing that, yes, what are they doing about the non-Muslim minorities in their countries? Are they acknowledging, yes, the non-Muslim minorities are being persecuted as well? Or are they just singing the mantra of Islamophobia, Islamophobia? So hear me out. So the point is, okay, so in this particular bill, uh, yes, as I've said before, if I was an Indian citizen, I would have obviously said that, yes, include Ahmadis, atheists, ex-Muslim atheists. You know, like, I mean, yeah. our guy Spartacus had to run. So in, in, please yeah. include Ahmadis, ex-Muslim atheists, and even Muslims you want. So, okay, so Muslims, they obviously, BJP has a problem with Muslims. They, they already think there are far too many Muslims in their country. So, you know, they, they, I, I, that exposes them. But as a Pakistani, why do I support this bill? I actually support this bill because, yes, it would have been better if there were Muslims, ex-Muslims, and uh, other people as well. But this will embarrass Pakistan. I mean, I am concerned with Pakistan. I'm concerned mm -hmm. with the progress of Pakistan. So this will embarrass right. Imran Khan. This will embarrass the government that, okay, we have these non-Muslim minorities, who, uh, these Hindus. I've been speaking so many times about, I don't care about the Indian Hindus. I'm talking about the Pakistani Hindus who are persecuted. The girls, the, over 100 girls are kidnapped every year, but actually more than that. 100 girls, right. at least 100 girls every year kidnapped um, married off with, uh, uh, with Muslim men, converted to Islam, and then even after a couple of years later, they actually divorced and dumped. So what is the government doing about it? Nothing. No legislation. Nothing. Nothing. Christians, we know what happened to Asya Bibi. They, have, they live in their own segregated little villages, and they're, they're treated as third-class citizens. So, so what, are the, what is Pakistan doing? So when these Christians and Muslims, and DW actually reported that, that a lot of Hindus actually... Uh, welcome this decision. A Hindu in Pakistan, a persecuted Hindu or Ahmadi or, or, or a Christian in Pakistan, he's not going to care about, okay, well, there are Rohingya Muslims or whatnot. These, these are luxuries of people like us who are living in a developed country and we don't have any other problem. So so they, they, they welcome this decision. So this is what, so as a Pakistani, I'm saying, okay, this is a good bill. As an overall international humanist, you could probably say, yes, it could have been better if they had included more people in that too. So 50, if, some, if, if there's some 50% good coming out instead of 80%, then that doesn't mean that the first 50% should be thrown out as well. So um, I, I might sound like an apologist uh, for BJP, which I've numerous times I've written against him, I've spoken against him. I, I'm not a fan of... No, Modi actually, you're, you're but, very vocal against these uh, Hindutva nut jobs that always uh, Hindu show up. Yeah, the Hindu nationalists, and, and those are the people who support the BJP. So... Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I, so I want to go back to. And I, yeah, I actually. Uh, so but, I but, but in point. this case, as. But, sorry, I, there's a delay, so I keep on thinking yeah. I'm interrupting. But I, I, I see your point, and I understand it, and I actually agree with it. I think overall, um, this came out. So I, I think the question is, and this is what complicates it. Uh, there's another part to what's happening with this, right? Um, and. Uh, and this is the actual thing of Indian Muslims. I, I, I don't know exactly what it is, so I'm going to ask you. Um, where, where Indian Muslims themselves are being, I think their stature is being challenged as well. Like the protests that are happening in like Jamilia yeah. University or what, what was that? Like all those videos that came out online. Can you hear me? Okay, so... Oh, you can. Okay. Delay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, listeners. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so what the fear is, so, so the fear is that, that there's a next step after this. And now that's a very scary part. And I will overwhelmingly reject that. And I think government has actually seen the outcome and they're saying, okay, now we'll only implement that in the far eastern state of Assam, which is very close to Bangladesh. And that's where they have a problem of a lot of Bangladeshi migrants, illegal migrants or refugees in there. 
um, so they would only do that there. So the impl- so that uh, next step is going to be called NRC, National Register of uh, Citizens. The registry, yeah, yeah, yeah. The National uh, Registry for Citizens. So, so the problem with that is, so when they're going to do this, okay, who's a citizen, who's not? They've got that out of the picture. Now, then they're going to work out. It, imagine there's a Hindu migrant or a refugee, and there's a Muslim who goes there to this re- to, to this registry and tries to register his. Um, his uh, India has been an underdeveloped country for a very long time. There's so many people who never got birth certificates. They never they were born there for two, three generations, or even more. You know, maybe thousands of years have been there, but but you know they don't have any birth certificates, any legal documents, or whatnot. But because they're Muslims. And they're going to see them if they had a, if they've been chopped chopped downstairs or not, and uh, or if their name is what whatever their name is Abdullah Muslim name or not, then yeah. they may be refused to be to be to be called an Indian citizen. So that's the implication of that. That's yeah. And so that's the issue. That's uh, that I, yeah. So so that actually the, the first bill itself. Is independent of this. This this will be a totally independent action. Yes, you could say that. I mean, a lot of pundits are saying that that the the, the BJP is heading towards that. It may or may not. As I said, if you, if it does, I wouldn't support that. But but this bill itself. So what? I mean, if we say that we're going to support the, we're going to protect the food Buddhists or Hindus and Christians and Jains. Then we have to include Muslims as well. Sure, we should include Muslims as well because we should have it's a secular country. We should have non, uh, all all the um, minorities or all the all the persecuted people, regardless of their age, color, and religion and whatnot. But that alone itself could have been better. But it it's, itself is not too evil. This NRC, the National Registry for Citizens, now that's a bad part. And so what the the state is now saying that we're only going to implement it in Assam and we're not going to do that in the rest of the rest of India. So, so but it, yeah, because that's the thing. I think that most people were looking at this, and that includes me. Uh, when I look at it, I'm looking at both of those things in combination. Like, I'm not saying, okay, there's this part, and then there's that part. Because if you, if you go with that, then you can take, uh, you know, it's sort of like, in a way, the Trump travel ban. You know, the travel ban, initially, he said that he wanted to get rid of all Muslims. 13 countries, yeah. It got whittled down to, like, you know, 13 countries and five and six. So it's uh, and and now you know like well you can't call it a Muslim ban it's these five countries and what about all the other guys? and and it's but you know where the motivation came from you know yeah yeah but yeah you know what's driving it and then when you when you take it and and you take that bill and you take it in combination uh, with the national registry um, proposal and you've got both of these things working out together and they came out at the same time. Uh, and yeah, they they with pressure they whittled think, it down to just a sum. I, I, I so I think that is the kind of thing that is upsetting think, people look, because that well let, let me just finish one point that I I I feel like this is uh, and you know invoking Godwin's law and Armin actually brought up this anal- analogy uh, the other night when when we were doing a live stream is that this is kind of Hitler esque in the way that it started. It starts off in a way where. It's motivated by certain long-term goals, and you know they sort of project and extrapolate what the after effects are going to be. But they just, but phenotypically, just the way it appears, it seems harmless. So that like, oh, that's completely reasonable, and you can't really argue that it's reasonable. All you can say is that, hey, no, but this is a slippery. Once you go down this road, this is where it's going to lead, and I, I think that's the thing that most people are reacting to. You understand I think, what I mean? I, I, look, look I, I understand that, but I think it's still uh, where it might lead. We don't know, but we can see. The, but, but the NRC, uh, sorry, the the actual Citizenship Amendment Act itself. As I said, I, I'm looking at it just on its own. It's no mm-hmm. big deal uh, as far as that's concerned. But you're right that it could. That I'm with you that the motivation of uh, Modi, if I was India's Prime Minister, with aware of all these persecuted minorities in the Muslim countries, I would have included Muslims as well. But obviously, motivation. That yeah, yeah, <laughs> motivation. So, <laughs> so, 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 so there's mo- So there's Modi. We know that he doesn't. And you know, the, 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 there was a there was I forgot who wrote that um, the full checklist of people how they actually uh, persecute minorities. They uh, alienate them, pro- promote nationalism, and you know, xenophobia and all that. All, all the checklists. Yeah, that, that people- formula. 
Uh, it's a, and, yeah. and you know, the thing is, because one, one of the things that you said um, that's kind of chilling in a way, if you look at it in this context, is when you say that by comparison, the BJP seems like the saner party. And, and that is how a, a lot of these, these things started, you know, with the whole uh, uh, the alienation and then uh, the nationalism and bringing people together. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, so, you know. You're right. And, then, and, 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 but I think this is why, again, we go back to our older argument that we've been having now for the last 10 years that we, we, we people, you and I and so many others, we, we, we're, we are actually traditional leftists, but it's the left that is le- letting us down. I mean, if, if the leftists were not making these outrageous decisions where they were bending over backwards to the right wingers of the minorities, this would not have gotten to this. I mean, mm-hmm. BJP would not have come to power uh, before this was Congress was in the power, and before there was another BJP, but that guy was Vajpayee. He 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 was he was a traditional oh, Vajpayee, classic, yeah. He was a traditional classical Hindu, sorry, uh, a, a secularist. He was nowhere near like Modi. Now Modi's Modi can be scary. That okay, what is where is it going? And he's probably amp- amping it down. And then his supporters would say, no, no, it was always meant to be Assam. But yeah, I know. And. and and the lynchings happen, nothing, you know, the, 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 the guy, Tabrez Ansari, I don't know if he spoke about it last time, the guy who was lynched by a mob, Tabrez Ansari, a Muslim guy, mm-hmm. he was told mm-hmm. to say yeah. Jay Shukram and whatnot, all his murderers have been released on bail. So, so we, we definitely see this anti-Muslim bigotry on the, and, or in, in, yeah. in India. And again, the same problem is these Hindus who previously might not have been that motivated to attack or, or be that nationalistic or xenophobic. Uh, I actually saw it coming from a long time ago because I've been following yeah. Indian cricket as well. And I know this nationalism and xenophobia has always been there, but now it's just being amplified to such a scale that it's turning in, uh, against minorities. But, uh, but, but now we're seeing that, that it's just on a different scale and these people are just, where is it going to end? Where, uh, and they, they would always tell you that, oh, we're doing this because... Look at Muslims, what they're doing, the terrorists. You, you see the comments. You see, the, you, you see these people in thousands, in thousands of comments that I read from these people that, look at Muslims, you know, you're a terrorist. You're, you're just going to blow us up. So, so this is the whole view That's of Muslims. That's so to 2015. No, no, actually, no, it's actually <laughs> no, getting no, more I mean, and more. I think it'd be like, yeah. but, it, that, but that would be 2025 as well. Because oh, no, no, I'm talking thing, about Muslims actually blowing things up. Nowadays, because there was a time before 2015, every time you heard a terrorist yeah. attack or something, you're like, okay, shit, it's yeah, a Muslim. Yeah. It, was, right. it was an anomaly for it to be like a, a, a Timothy McVeigh well, no. or whatever. Yeah, but, but, they, but they, now, they've moved on to different, they're, 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 they've gone into stabbing or, you know, they're, they're, they've gone into other things. But, but, but yeah, okay, what, no, what happened, but, but majority, yeah, but majority of Muslims are actually condemning it. You know, we've already seen that, that, that uh, Muslims yeah, are moving yeah. away, mainstream Muslim pop. They're moving away from that. So, so, but the why? Uh, the, but the Westerners are also thinking. They're also seeing. Okay, Muslim. I'm talking about right wing Westerners. Muslims bad. Hindus, Asians, Chinese. They're not too bad. So the so so this the whole of this uh, pandemonium that happened in the last 10, 15 years or so. It's now engraved, uh, ingrained in them. In the, in the psyche of everyone, and which is why, on the basis of that, they're actually justifying the bigotry towards Muslims. Right. So, and I think that, yeah, they use that because I'm still kind of thinking about how you said that the BJP seems like the Stainer party. And then when you put it in, because, you know, to me, I, I was my immediate reaction was, no, they don't. But then <laughs> when you put it in the context of the opposition and how the the left has gone is you know going insane, and and we saw that in uh, in the UK recently, right, with the, with the yeah. election, and we also talked about this in the year end Q and A. Is the way that Boris Johnson did things, right? This is going from BJP to just BJ, um, which is always fun. The, he it's so this guy he actually campaigned on an economically liberal platform, uh, yeah. on socialized medicine, totally pro NHS raising the minimum wage so you know all of the the traditional labor support in the north um just switched parties and they came to him because meanwhile jeremy corbyn was just talking about stuff that was just completely crazy he was like he was going to spend the stuff that he didn't have any any um he couldn't explain where the revenue was going to come from it was all very very vague uh and you know he he was there was a whole problem of the anti-semitism apologists um 
in labor and and they're, they're, uh, w- when the left goes you know full i don't know what word to use but yeah when the left goes actually when when it goes crazy and goes like really really far left and becomes loony uh, then in those cases then you know th- these people they take uh, advantage of it uh, people like Boris Johnson can take advantage of it people like the BJP and Modi can take advantage of it they can fill that void opportunistically so uh, that, yeah, yeah, that, that's why they win elections. You they win elections, and everybody's surprised. Like yeah. uh, the online world is very, very surprised. You know, in, in the U.S., they're surprised that uh, that it's like, you know, why is Biden consistently leading the polls when everybody online loves Alexandria and Ocasio Cortez and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren on Twitter? Everybody hates Biden, but when you go out and do the polls in the real three dimensional world. Right, eight points, nine points, ten points. Biden is consistently in the lead. You know why? So, and it's something that is that disconnect is, I think, a product of of, of the block button because you know you block people you don't like and you you're never exposed to. You don't understand what's really going on. You're not getting a. You don't have a good temperature of of uh, the society that you're actually living in. And yeah. And, yeah, I, I, I think that, look, we already know the spectrum has always been shifting consistently. The, the old liberals are today's conservatives. And, you know, like, I mean, as you said, in the case of Boris Johnson, they're all, um, you know, he's, he's got leftist policies, which are traditionally against rightist policies. Maybe the new, you know, the old left is the new right. And that's why, uh, and that was probably the sanest option out of all that even people of today are finding them more related to the to the old left, which is the new right, and they're going towards them because the new left has just gone far too left. And I'll give you another example where I said that there was one divorce issue with Muslim women where BJP supported and it ended up emancipating the Muslim women. And regardless of the accusations that, okay, that was because they, they're liberating Muslim women because they hate Islam. So, okay, if you want to say that. There was another case where uh, Congress... Uh, insisted on not monitoring the funding that goes into the mosques in India. Um, But the government, the state of India, is aware and they monitor all the funding that goes into uh, temples. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so again, you see the same thing that, okay, well, with minorities, we'll give them a little bit of a... But but when the minority is Muslim, we unfortunately, again, I'm not making a bigoted statement, we know that a lot lot of trouble has come out of mosques. And the um, uh, un- un- unmonitored funding, we don't know where it comes from. Saudi Arabia, Wahhabis, and whatnot. Um, so, and we we had the same thing here in Australia as well. Funnily enough, uh, the, the, but so BJP came around and said, no, okay, we're going to monitor what's going in the mosques as well. And majority of Hindus said, okay, that sounds again, as I said, that sounds like a saner option. Why not monitor all these monies that go into these things? So, so this is why I think they. Do make sense initially. Now the problem is okay. Now they've gotten everyone on board. That okay, everyone is equal. You know what not. Where is it going to end? The NRC. I think NRC is probably going to. And I said it before. I don't know what's going to happen. I was going to give you a, 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 a hypothetical scenario, which is actually very realistic. It's going to happen where a Muslim comes to the registrar and a Hindu comes to the registrar. Um, and said, okay, a Hindu doesn't have to show anything. He doesn't have to show any paperwork, no birth certificate. Yeah. As long as he's a Hindu, fine, you get a citizenship. And a Muslim is like, oh, sorry, dude, uh, I got nothing. What are they going to do with these people? Are they going to send... Bangladesh has already said, like, how, like they did it in the case of Shamima Begum, the ISIS bride. They said, well, we're not going to take anyone in. All the, pe- all the supposed Bangladeshis who went into India as refugees... They're not Bangladeshi citizens because obviously when they go into other countries, they don't go with passports. So, mm-hmm. you know, so it's harder for them to deport you. So uh, Bangladeshi, if you think they're Bangladeshi, we're not going to take them. So I think that's going to be a bit of a mess. On the other hand, and yes, economy is not doing re- really that well. A lot of people are also criticizing this for other reasons that, okay, we, we are already a 1.4 billion country. We've got such and such poverty. Now you're taking 100 million more people or 10 million, however that many people is. Um, uh, where you're going to house them and whatnot. So I, 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 think, I think time will tell. I'm still saying that the actual Amendment Act is not really that bad. Um, the, the, the registry 
for citizenship. I think that's going to be problematic and that's going to be mm-hmm. very bad if, if, if India goes ahead with that. So what? I mean, um, yes, Muslims should have been included, but, but it, it's still fine. It still serves a lot of purpose. Just because you're not helping 10 people, um, uh, you're helping five. So, mm. okay. I mean, you know, from that aspect, I'm saying, okay. I'm not going to say that, okay, well, they're Muslim countries. Why don't they take the persecuted Muslims? So I'm not, I'm not going to use a silly argument. But um, it, it would have been better, but it's, it's itself, that, that Amendment Act itself is not that bad as people are making out to be. NRC is going to be bad. Yeah. Well, okay, that sounds good. I think we're at time right now. So thanks for joining us again, Matt Harris. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. You're, you're, I think, the first person who's come here three times. Yeah, yeah, am I? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah you are. And it's it's really, really good. I'm, I'm really glad about that. Because when it comes to this, I think one of the few people who's so in tune with what's happening, uh, both in Pakistan and India, uh, especially as an atheist, because um, you know, he doesn't have a, a dog in the race. And, and the other guy who I really like is Zubin, Mad- Zubin Madan, the writer. He's Why? also another. I, I don't know if you know him. but No, I don't know. He comes from a Parsi background. Uh, and he is also he's also been on the show previously, and I think I think we're probably gonna I'm gonna reach out to him again and see if he can come on and we can get some right uh, perspective on this too. And and this is something, admittedly, I I don't really know uh, a lot of what's happening uh, in India. I haven't been able to catch up with every element of it. But uh, there's it's, it's one last thing I wanted to ask you about: student protests and the way that they're cracking down on them. That is something very visible that all of us have seen online. And, and students should be able to protest, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think, sorry, so I, I also want to say that, uh, I don't know when people are going to watch this, but so we are organizing events, uh, demonstrations outside Pakistani consulates. So please write to Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain. You can email me um, uh, as well. You can go to my Facebook, actually, no, don't go to Facebook, I'm blocked on that. So you can go uh, to harrisultan.com, you can leave comments there, and I can leave your contact information where you fill out the forms, it's there. So if you are in Australia, then contact me. If you're in Britain, then please contact uh, Council of ex Muslim of Britain. We will be staging a protest in front of Pakistan High Consulate in, uh, in support of uh, Junaid Hafiz. Uh, I hope someone will do that in, um, from Council, of, sorry, ex Muslims of North America as well. But um, having said that, um, yeah, thank you for having me, and yeah, I've got to have you on my other channel as well. So yeah, I'm gonna come yeah, on make, there. Make It'll be fun. So let's do that sometime, maybe in January. Uh, hopefully January. I think let's do it in January. It'll be fun. All right, all right, man. Well, thank you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Merry Christmas. We're actually recording this on Christmas Eve in Australia, where Harris is. Yes, and uh, I and he's well ahead of me. There's a massive time difference between. Uh, me and yeah. you, it's like 14 hours or something. So Yeah, yeah, it's like we're living in a different time. You're, yeah. you're ba- basically, you're 14 days younger than me. <laughs> I, I, I 14 am, hours, I 14 hours. 14 hours it's younger. Like we were born on the same day, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, it's actually, yeah. It's, uh, so, anyway, uh, season's greetings to everybody who is listening to this. I guess the patrons would probably um know that but uh, for many of you who hear it on audio it's already going to be 2020 so happy new year to all of you and um we'll see you next time so thank you very much um i'll stop recording